Hello and welcome to Conquering Mount Scrapmore with Brenda. I'm Brenda and today we're going to give you two minis for Free Pattern Friday. Yay! It's Free Pattern Friday! So we've covered the Friendship Star and the Turn Dash Star in prior case studies but I thought wouldn't it be cute to do just two little stars and have them both show up so you can get through some of your crumbs. Like I'm going to use my fabric today from my crumb bin so when I'm doing my foundation paper piecing and that's the most accurate way to get your tiny little squares done it's going to be beautiful and fun now I want to talk to you about Beth at my sewing room her YouTube channel is wonderful she has so many wonderful ideas for scrappy quilts so her link for her YouTube channel is going to be in the show note below if you haven't checked her out but you subscribe over there or you know you you like what you see tell her Brenda from Conquering Mount Scrapmore sent you it would be so nice that you you say hi to her for me uh, the other thing is we have a Facebook group we're having lots of fun there and we're sharing lots of pictures and wonderful ideas and we have some very talented people in that group so if you're not anti Facebook please come over and join there's a virtual sewing room there 24 7 we're either voting or we have decided on our next zoom sew date and that's happens once a month so come on in we've got some foundation paper piecing to do for our churn dash and our friendship star okay so as you can see I have a pile of crumbs just little bits and bobs of stuff just because I have bits and bobs of stuff stuff and I have basketfuls so this is your pattern you're going to find below and it is a paper piecing one now there's two different patterns on here at the same time right so I decided today I was going to go with blue and white um, so I cut and trimmed the took printouts of this and I trimmed them down so they're a smaller size but I've also oops, also now have done with my tracing wheel is I've marked them now with this tracing wheel let's say you're doing a bunch you could do up to four of these you know in as they print out of your uh, computer you do four of these and you know you've got four of them marked already so it's kind of one of those things where that tracing wheel just helps everything move and bend and everything it just works nice so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start and I'm just grabbing stuff now I know all of my ones I believe all of my ones are color so that that works so I'm just gonna start now I don't need big pieces here either I need little tiny pieces so I'm just going to go and there should be a line between one and two and of course they're not because I missed it oh well let's get this now and you just do your little tracing wheel just like that and I might as well make sure yeah it didn't get on this one either because I was I was in a hurry this morning okay so everything else is there yeah okay so let's get one and two done so this like I say the tracing wheel idea it works really well so number one is your color so the color goes here up against this and then the white goes on the other side right so now you just want to lay this so it's like a quarter of an inch a fair fairly decent quarter of an inch into the work right so now you get this out of the way and guess what I forgot my add a quarter ruler and my uh, little cutting board oh dear I might have to stop and get that so so you can do more than one thing at a time with these right so you can do you know several at a time and they all look great I'm gonna put a darker one here a darker one here and little piece of white. I'm gonna find a little piece of white oh okay this is cute this is cute that will work okay a little piece of it's just basically a low volume I'm gonna check make sure I've got a good quarter inch yes I do and under it goes under it goes and it doesn't even matter at this point in the game which which one you're working on so the two the one is here now I just got a big oversized piece and I'm okay with that big oversized piece being there and I have another oversized piece for number two no number one should be number one is the center so it should be white 
and this should be blue. So we have to make sure we're a good quarter inch. Yes, we are. And we can just go right across. There we go. Now, for the Friendship Star, I'm going to go just like this. One is the color and two is the neutral. So I'm going to lay one down and I'm going to get a pretty little neutral right like this. And just lay it down just like that. There we go. And go right across that seam. And we'll do the same again. Get a pretty... Oh, tiny. I need tiny. Maybe I don't have anything left that's tiny. Oh, no. Okay, here we are. That's a... We can cut that. Uh, we can cut that. That's fine. So number one goes like this. Number two goes like this. Oh, goes like this. Number one goes like this. Face up, because we're working on the wrong side. And number two goes face down. Because again, we're working on the wrong side. Now, if you're in doubt, you can take this and put this up against a window just to make sure you've got enough coverage for everything. Right? Now, with this one... You're going to need something a little longer, right? Because number one is a big piece. Now, this is in the Friendship Star, and we remove the seams, right? So we would put one like this, and then we'd need something big for two, just so we make sure we have coverage, right? So we're going to go just like this, and then trim. Okay. Now, now I have to cut and get my uh, cutting mat, my rotary cutter, because I don't have it. So I will be back, and I'm going to get an add a quarter ruler too. So just bear with me, and I'm I don't know why I forgot it, but I did. Okay, and we'll be right back, and I'll I'll get it. I'll get all that stuff organized for you. Okay. Okay, so part, here we go. I finally got my add a quarter ruler, a cutting mat, and a rotary cutter, because, wow. <laughs> I hope I'm forgetting stuff today. I don't know why I'm forgetting stuff today. So anyways, that tracing wheel helps you trim, helps fold the paper as well. And it's, and it's quick, right? So you don't have to have a lot of stuff hanging around, right, to, to make this work, right? So... What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put a oversized piece of fabric here just on top because I know it'll work. And I just want some fun little musical notes to be in there. So, yeah, no, I'm going to have to go this way. All right. Doesn't matter. Okay. So I've got it all ready and I'm just going to put go through and run between one and three. Okay. There. Now, next up is, okay, one and three, and three is a color, so we want to make sure we've got uh, good coverage. There we go, and that goes into the scraps, and I might as well, between here, I might as well cut between two and, th and five while I'm there, you know, because it's on the board, it might as well get cut, right? So, okay. Now, I'm just going to trim it this way, up across like that. And I bet you I can use that piece of fabric on this side. Yes, I can. Because it's going to be big enough. Yeah. Okay, so we're just going to pick this up, just like so. And now number three is the color. Now, if you get confused easily, you can put color or background. You can actually mark these where... It makes it easier for you. I mean, I, I've been quilting a while. And you can just take your pen and write on there. Okay, this one's going to be red, and that one's going to be blue, and that's going to be wonderful, and it's all good. All of it's good. You know, don't worry about anything. Just make, make it pretty, make it happy, make it work. There we go. There's a big enough piece. There we go. And I'm just going to put a big piece like that on and roll it through. There we go. 
Now I have this piece. Now three and four are what's going to be next. Now I want to sew three, but I, since it's on the board again, I might as well get four lined up. I'm just going to move this so it's not on the corner. Okay, there. And I'm going to get four done right away because I can. It's so nice that you'll be able to, with that tracing wheel, it's just such a great idea. Just so nice. Nice and fun and quick and happy. Okay, so I'm going to sew three, and three is a color, so I want something bright. Ooh, I have something bright right there, but I don't need it that big. I can take this, and I can cut it in half. There we go. So that's a piece now I would make sure that I use. Now, I don't need it that big. So I would just put it like that and run it under. Okay, this one too is another one. Four is here. Let's get that. Just trim it. We don't have to sew it right now. We have to trim it, but it's on the board. We might as well trim it. And five or three, this is the one we're sewing. So nice and straight and flat, lovely. And we're going to put the other side of this on here. And we're gonna sew it just like that. Okay, three goes just like that. Okay. Oh. Okay, and this one, okay, number three just goes here like so. And it's trimmed. Okay. It does take long, especially when you get a plan in mind as to, to what you want to do. Now, I want to make sure that I have enough covering. So this is going to flip up. So I want to make sure the bigger piece is on top. I'm going to put, wait a minute, I'm going to put... Uh, ooh, this one, this one. I'm going to put this one on there. It'll be fine. Okay, so I'm going to move it so when I flip it, this will show, right? Okay, three. Oh, yeah. There we go. Get all of this off and clipped. You know, that's the nice thing about having a big basket of crumbs. Okay, so four is next. So four, I want something big and bright too. Ooh, I want something different. There we go. That'll be good. That'll work. And I just cut through because I got I know I've got two fours, right? So I might as well. So four, it goes this way, right? So I want my color to go like this. Right? So the way I get my color to go like that is I just go like this. And, oops, wrong way. Oops, here we go. Wrong way. Okay, now, I'm going to go right across and clip the last one. Okay, now we know that's a friendship star, right? So we just have to trim off this little bit. And we know we've got a good friendship star. The center. This is a friendship star. Center. Okay. And now we're looking for the other four. Okay. So the other four has to go like this as well. So we're going to just sew it like that. I think these are way oversized, but I'm working with crumbs. Most people would have thrown out this stuff already, so it's fine. You know. Now I've got... This, is this big enough? No, it's not. I sewed it the wrong way. Of course I did. This is where you pick out your your work. This did not work. So, and you just start gently removing every third or fifth stitch somewhere in there. Like, you know, you don't need a lot of stitches to get it removed. And tape becomes your friend. Tape is your best friend with this. Okay, so you can also pull it like this, and you can pull usually quite a ways before it, 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 you know, before it becomes a problem. 
Okay, there we go. There. And we will start again. That's okay. Okay, now, in order to get this sewn on the right way, let's make sure we've got this where where we need to get it. Hang on. Of course, some threads are just obstinate. So if you want to be obstinate, you can stay there. Okay. Because chances are you're going to get cut off. So we want this to be there. Right? So we need that to be just like that. So we need more of that that way. Okay. Now, am I going to have coverage? Yes, I am. Okay. So now, I'm going to sew it just like that. Okay. Let's see if I did that wrong again. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It would not be the first time. It probably will not be the last either. Okay. I'm going to put this down. Okay. Because five is there. Oh. Okay. And the last one. One, two, three. And I did this one wrong too. Because I need it longer. Okay. That's alright. That's alright. We just we just do what we have to do, you know, with the stitch ripper. It's all good. That's all good. You have to shorten your stitch length when you're doing uh, foundation paper piecing. Because it's just, um, it's one of those things you need lots of perforations in your paper to get the paper off. And if you don't have that perforation, you're not getting this off. You're not getting this off your, your work. So yes, everybody goes through a day where they have nothing but problems with their paper piecing. I, okay, I need to figure out what I'm doing wrong before I put it through the machine, because I'm not sure, I'm not convinced I got the other one done. Right. Okay. There we go. Okay, now that's coming apart at the back. So, be very careful with that one, because, yeah, that that looks like it's gonna call, fall apart. I'm just gonna quickly grab some tape, because, this is your best friend. Okay. And you just put it down like that. Yeah. Nothing, nothing formal, nothing weird, nothing anything, right? Now, we want this to be like this, right? So we can't have, I'm going to sew that, I sewed that one wrong too. Okay. So the only way we're going to get that size is to go like this and then we yeah I need a bigger piece okay we'll just go with a bigger piece that's that works we'll just go with a big piece of fabric that'll be fine and then we'll have lots of coverage it'll be great okay where's my foot pedal there it is disappeared disappeared on me oh, that's okay overkill that's what that's called is overkill now Okay, so with these now, <laughs> with these now, we're going to trim for five and six, right? So we're going to just push this over and we're going to trim this nice and neat. Where's my, okay, all right. I have made it a rule, if it comes off so five, because that's the number we're on here on this one. Okay. If it comes out of my, my, my crumb box, nothing goes back. It, otherwise I have another never ending supply of crumbs. And I don't know what to do with them half the time. So I'm just going to put a blue across and down and run it through. Okay, and another one. Okay, now. So we find three and six. 
and we trim that so it looks nice. There we go. And now we do four and five, but we're going to sew five because that's the fifth piece of fabric that's on here. Okay, there we go. And we're just going to fold that out of the way. Here. Yeah, this, these, uh, every once in a while, people get confused. This is supposed to keep you more mentally alert. Okay, five. I'm supposed to sew five. We're going to sew five. Here we go. Nice. And just like that. Put this under the needle. These will look really cute when they're done. No, there's a moment of truth on that first one that we made. Have we made a mistake again? Yes, we have. Okay. So this is the second time. I'm just, I'm going to tape this before we even start because this will go awry very quickly. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes these weird angles just make you a little nuts. And I can't get my, my stitches, I uh, can't get my ripper or my stitch ripper under my piece of fabric. So I just pull, we use the pullback method. That, what that works. Now there's some people when they're doing this, they, um, they do, they put the ball in and they, they put the ball inside so they don't rip anything, but that's when you're doing a long seam. This is not a long, thin seam. Oh, we'll try that. No, that's not going to work. It's cutting my fabric. It's going to cut my fabric. So you got to go this way. That's okay. That's okay. We will take this fabric and rescue it and put it back into our crumb bin, but because I just for the life of me I cannot figure out how to do this today without uh, you know, and when you have a day like that, it's okay. It's okay to have days like that where you're just you know not quite there. Okay, let's get a bigger piece of fabric and I have this one. I have this one that works. I've got I got good coverage on everything. When I fold it over a quarter of an inch, it will cover. Yes, so we're good. We're golden for this. So let's just cover this one and get it over with. There. All right. So <laughs> we're gonna have the churn dash done by the time we get the flying this guy done. Okay, so now this needs a little piece of I sewed the wrong one the last time, but that's okay. It's symmetrical. So when it's symmetrical like that, it really doesn't matter which one you do next, right? Because it's symmetrical. We're going to take this beat up piece that we tried to sew on twice somewhere else, and we're going to put that through. So I guess to move it along. <laughs> okay, so this is, the, this is the one that's been sewn a few times. So I also have a big triangle here now, which is okay. I'm just going to take my triangle and I'm going to use it somewhere else. So that's another piece that goes on here. And, okay. So here we go. There's another one. And a six is, needs a white triangle. So guess what? I have a white triangle. Yeah, you can do lots of these very quickly. Okay. Now. There we go. And last but not least is, okay, the other side of this. And I'm going to pick this because it's nice and bright and shiny. And it's cute. Why not? Why not? Let's do something cute. Okay. There we go. Now, once you get, I think that's it. I think that's all the pieces. Yeah. Okay. So once you get like four or, you know, your, your piece done, now you're going to trim it and you're going to trim it. And I, you can trim it like this. Now I'm on the hinge of my sewing machine. So I'm going to trim it just like that. And 
Okay. Now you're going to trim that way as well. So now you haven't taken the paper off yet. Remember, your paper's still on there. So now you're going to take the center piece, right? And you're going to trim that one as well. Trimming them actually puts, puts this block perfectly in alignment. Now I'm going to show you how to needle match these so that you match the ends because this this will work as a three and a half it's a three and a half inch finished unfinished block which will finish at three inches but you have to know how to needle match them right and sometimes people just that's the part they have the problems with right so okay so once we get a block done there Go. <laughs> and usually these are pretty good for matching up. They, when you're doing simple ones, simpler ones like this, they match up nice. Okay, so here's the first one. So there's your your center. Okay, there's your center, and there's your outside edges right so it looks pretty good right it's pretty simple okay so now how you do this is you put these down and you match up you needle match right like you put the needle in right at where the point is supposed to be right so this one will probably go right there and it needle matches perfectly right and it should go right like this Yep, and it needle matches perfectly. So that means I can take this and I just push my needle out of the way and I go down the center, but I don't go over my needles. I don't sew over my needle. I sew on that line because I've needle matched them. There we go. So that's the first part of this. Now let's get some... The second part is here, so I'm just going to get these three pieces off and we'll show you what we do with all this. Okay, so this one, too, is going to be matched up and we get the center done first. Yeah, yeah my husband and I were talking about me doing chats or, you know, lectures or not lectures, lectures, provide um, for guilds. So if you know a guild that's looking for speakers, you know, please let them know. Now you want the outside edge of that seam. There we go. Just like that. They don't take long to do because they're so tiny, right? They're so very tiny and very, very cute. And that could, no, I'm putting that out. That one's gone. So I believe this is the center of our turn dash. So here's one of the outside edges. And we're just going to flip that up and out of the way. Nice. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Can you see what I'm doing here? Yeah, I'll move that in a little bit better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the neat thing about this foundation paper piecing, um, <laughs> there, it's the precision. If you have a sew, you can, people can sew three and a half inch square block like this and have good precision. They can't. It's you know, and it's it's a skill basically that you build on, and it you know eventually you get down pat. It'll be perfect, right? The problem is that sometimes you're off or your quarter inch foot's off and you don't know what's wrong with it and you gotta you want to make something little like this well this is why people run to foundation paper piecing because it's because of the precision behind it right so you can have a very as long as you can sew a straight line you've got a beautiful block when it's when it's over there we go 
And the last little bit of trimming. Okay, there we go. Nice. Okay. I hope this one doesn't run too long. Okay, so this is what your trim dash looks like now. And we're just going to fold over a piece and we're going to do a needle match. Just very quick little needle match. Oops. Okay, this is not working. There. Okay. Now I'm gonna put it in the corner and it comes out the other corner. Right, and Hmm. Now you take your time, line up that corner. Ooh, and I missed the corner. Oh, I missed the corner on the other one too. Oh, wow. Okay, so I'm putting this so it's, I'm matching my corners. And I missed, I missed this corner just by a hair. I'm going to put it through again. Hang on. You match up right in that corner. And that will give you a nice looking block. Okay, so now we push it over. Let's get this out of the way. There's so much stuff here all of a sudden. <laughs> and you're like, wow, how did that happen? Well, oh, it's sewing. It's called sewing. Okay. Okay, now you pull that, that pin and, okay, make sure your other pin is in, in place. Okay, and you stitch along that line. Okay, there we go. Now, we're going to take this and fold that over. And now we're going to do the same thing here again with matching your lines. So I'm going to put this right in the corner, right in that spot. And I'm going to push through right in this spot. Oops, missed it. There, perfect. So I don't even have to pin them, like by tilting my pin, I just have to mark them. So now, if I push down straight through, if this is lined up perfectly, this is what happens. I just get right through that those two pin lines. And that's important when you're doing some of your uh, more complex ones. So I thought I'd show it to you here. Uh, we we had your, your attention. Just so, you know, some people have problems with this and this is the way to do it, so. Okay, it's starting to get away on me, so I'm pulling it back. And now we'll do the other last one of the turn dash. And I'm just pressing this out of the way. There's nothing more than pushing it, pushing it there. Because, yeah. Now, there's your one hole right there, right in the middle, right there, and oops. And then we're gonna go here, oops, right here, oh, right there. Okay, that's yep, perfect up and down, get rid of this thread. And now, when you line all that up, it should magically line up this one. So you're gonna just risk it. Ooh, you're out. Okay, you're out because it wobbled. Okay, so you wanna make sure this matches. There we go. That's nice and flat. See, there's no wow. There's no one's not longer than the other. So now I'm just push it down and just crank, hand crank it over on your own. And now sew with that straight line. Uh, and you gotta get the pin sometimes. Push it in the right spot. Then you pull it out. And now I trim this. And I'm going to go in to this. I'm going to go in. And now I'm going to put my stay stitching because I know I have biased edges. <laughs> and I'm going to press to the center. So I'm going to also pull out this stuff here right away. There we go. Oh. There we go. And get rid of this. <sighs> Sometimes it's, it's harder to take it out after. There we go. And last, not quite last. Yeah, sometimes it's easier to take out that little piece 
bit of paper because it, it's going to get stuck in there. So you just put this in just like so. There we go. And this is also pushing your seams the way you want them. There. Now, same thing here. We're just going to push this in. Yeah, we're going to push it in. Okay, yeah, we're going to push this out. Sorry, we're pushing this out. So that will probably lie flatter if it's pushed out. Yeah. Oops, let's get that off. Okay. There we go. And I just get rid of that piece. And I push it down like that. There. Yeah, I like my stay stitching. I don't worry about stretchy edges. I don't worry about anything. When I stay stitch, I know I have a good product by the time I'm done. I know I've got a good product that's not going to go anywhere. And that it works. So, there we go. Yeah. And now, and now we're off to our Tada moment. So, what do you think of these little cuties? That friendship star here that really did put me through my paces, and I noticed one of my points didn't line up perfectly. But you know what? I will take it and remove that seam because I notice the seam's a little a little on the shy side for the center of this. So I will take it apart and I will, you know, fix it so it'll look good. These are such darling little blocks to play with. And if you love patchwork that's tiny, foundation paper piecing is the way to go, right? Because you just go through your crumbs and if it fits, it works. Um, one of the things I will say is that I love small piecing, so I have been able to do these by patchwork too. So I mean, and it is taking a little more skill and all this, a little more time, but it is doable. So I hope you do try these and you have fun with these and just, you know, play, just play. Don't worry about anything, just play. So I hope you have a fabulous week ahead until we meet again. Take care. Okay, bye. My husband and I would love to thank you for coming along with us on our quilting journey and the YouTube adventure that we're on. We have some wonderful plans for 2023 and it includes a lot more like with the Facebook group and the rooms feature and sewing and hanging out with people. Those monthly Zoom sew dates are still in the works. We have a lot of fun ideas coming up for 2023 and we hope you share, like and subscribe with your friends. That little notification but button and subscribing to us really helps us out. Commenting helps us out too. So if you like what you're seeing, let us know. Even send us a like a, a heart on the comment. That that helps so much for us. Okay, you have an absolutely fabulous 2023 and all of our best wishes for you in the future. Okay, take care. Bye.